This is the lecture for class number 20, 1st of March 2013 of Hydraulic Engineering. We'll begin with a couple of announcements. First of all, homework number 7 is due on Monday, the 7th of March. Remember that part of that assignment is to digitize the peak flow figure that I've given you on the handout and use it to answer the question uh, having to do with um, what's the flow rate during the day. And uh, regarding the project, the next phase of your project is going to be due on Friday the 8th. And for that, what you need to do is begin to optimize the pipe networks based on the demands that you've already estimated. As I mentioned in class previously, it's my intention to return the uh, demand estimation submissions that you've given me previously by Monday. And then what that will allow you to do is um, over the weekend you can draw the pipes on top of the scaled image that I've provided. Uh, you can start playing around with the uh, reservoir location and the uh, pipe sizes and then uh, when you have the demand estimations you can make any adjustments necessary there. Today we're going to talk about channel geometry and slope and before we do that I wanted to provide you with a little bit of information related to the homework assignment that you're going to be submitting. Um, open channel flow can be classified in some additional ways beyond those that we would typically classify flow for um, a fluid moving through a conduit like a pipe. Remember when it came to pipe flow that we did classify it laminar versus turbulent and we can make the same distinction when it's flow going through an open channel and of course since we don't have a diameter we make substitutions that are based on the hydraulic radius and we talked about that differentiation previously in the context of non-circular conduits so you can classify flow as laminar or turbulent and the Reynolds number breakpoints are the same as they were in pipe flow um, but because open channel flow uh, is open to the atmosphere and there can be a variety of different depths for a certain specific energy we can also classify flow as subcritical versus supercritical. Now there's a lot more information about these two distinctions uh, later on in the course when we talk about non-uniform flow. Uh, but for now, just as a teaser, what you can do is classify something known as the Froude number. And the Froude number has a lot of different formula variations, but one of the simplest ways to calculate it is if you know the average cross-sectional flow velocity, V, for a channel. Uh, and the depth, um, you can uh, find the Froude number and um, the hydraulic depth that's mentioned there, Y sub H, is simply the area divided by the top width. So T is the top width of a channel, uh, A the cross-sectional area, and so if it's a non-rectangular channel you can find this uh, hydraulic depth. Uh, y sub h. But that allows you to get the Froude number, and any Froude number greater than 1 is supercritical, less than 1 is subcritical, and it's going to be pretty exciting to visualize those two different types of flow when we get to hydraulic jump day. Uh, but for now, just know that those are two different ways to classify open channel flow, and I think that you need to refer to both in the homework assignment. So let's get a uh, little bit of an example here related to trapezoidal channel geometry. In this case we have a trapezoidal channel that's 15 meters wide at the bottom and so the bottom width lowercase b 15 meters. Uh, the top width 35 meters in this previous example here t uh, sometimes the variable t is assigned to the top width and sometimes it's a capital B. I think in, in our text it's referred to with a capital B. Uh, in the FE review manual I think it may be a T. Uh, but the top width of a trapez trapezoidal channel in this case is 35 meters. And so what I would like you to do is attempt to calculate on your own uh, the depth of flow given what we know about the side slopes, the cross-sectional area, the wetted perimeter, and remember that the wetted perimeter is that distance that water is in contact with the solid surface that provides resistance to flow. The hydraulic radius, and remember that hydraulic radius is simply the area divided by the wetted perimeter. Um, the hydraulic depth and the section factor. Hydraulic depth is the same thing as this y sub h, so it's the area divided by the top width 
And so the cross-sectional area that you'll calculate divided by the top width of 35 meters. And finally, the section factor M, uh, where M is the area divided by the height, uh, I'm sorry, area multiplied by the square root of the hydraulic depth. So pause this recording and um, you can refer to the table that I pointed out previously in chapter 10 where it has the, uh, the formulas for all the different area um, depending on the different types of cross sections and uh, I'm going to jump to a screencast of, uh, I'm sorry, a pen cast of the solution but I'd like you to attempt this independently before you start taking a look at the solution. All right, this is the example entitled Trapezoidal Channel Geometry. What we have is a trapezoidal channel with a top width that's specified as 35.0 meters, a bottom width which is specified as 15 meters, and we're told that uh, T equals 2, and what that means is that the horizontal component of the side slopes is 2 compared to 1 for the vertical. So the first thing we want to find out is what is the depth? So the depth, um, because we know that it has a 2 to 1 slope on the sides, that's what's going to be able to help us find that. If we continue up here, we know that this portion of the top width is 15 meters which means that of the 35 on the top there's another 20 so 10 meters on each side so the 35 is the entire width 10 is the uh, the top of each of those triangles and so if it's two horizontal for each one um, vertical then that's going to mean that y which is the depth is 5 meters All right, the next thing we need to find is the area. And so uh, the area is going to be um, this rectangular section along with the two triangular sections. And so it will be um, the formula that's provided on Table 10.1 for you. If you turn to Table 10.1, for a trapezoidal section they say it is b plus ty times y and so our b lowercase b is the bottom width that's 15 meters plus t which is 2 times y 5 meters times y 5 meters getting out a calculator The area is 125 meters squared. And um, if you want to check that, then you can break it up into sections. You've got the, the section that's 15 by 5 meters plus the section that is um, 5 meters by 10 meters and that 5 meters by 10 meters essentially is treating the two triangles as though you've joined them together and there again the answer is going to be 125 meters squared alright um, next we want to find the uh, wetted perimeter and the wetted perimeter there, uh, back to the table, 10-1, b plus 2yw, uh, where we're given that w is 1 plus t squared to the 0 0.5 power. So we'll start off by finding that 1 plus 2 squared to the half power. So that's going to be the square root of 5 2.2361 and we can substitute that back into this formula so 15 meters was our B plus 2 times the depth 5 meters now times the W factor 
three, six, one. So the wedded perimeter. Thirty-seven point four meters. All right, hydraulic radius. is defined as the area divided by the wetted perimeter and for our purposes 125 meters squared wetted perimeter was 37.36 meters actually if we keep the precision there so dividing those two it is 3.346 meters the hydraulic depth is going back to table 10.1 divided uh, defined as the area divided by the top width so hydraulic depth D is area divided by top width B uh, in our problem B was 35 meters and uh, I'll just mention again that T is sometimes the variable assigned top width and in fact in the FE review manual that's they, they use T as the top width um, but we have 35 meters I'm sorry no, that was our top width. area is 125 square meters and the top width is 35 meters So 3.571 meters is the hydraulic depth. And lastly, section factor. Uh, M is A, the square root of the hydraulic depth. And so the cross-sectional area, 125 square meters. Hydraulic depth was 3.571 meters, and two thirty six point two. And the units on this are a little bit strange. Um, the units on this are meters to the two point five power. All right, so that concludes the example for the trapezoidal geometry. Okay, so let's actually take this example a step further and try and find out what is the depth of flow using uh, the Manning's equation if we know that the flow rate through the channel is 17.5 cubic meters per second and the slope is 0.45 percent. Again, I'll suggest that you attempt to solve this yourself before uh, unpausing the recording and watching the pencast solution. All right, so let's say in this example there's again a trapezoidal channel and it still has a bottom width of 15 meters. It still has the uh, 2 to 1 side slopes, although it doesn't look like it. Not drawn to scale. Um, we have some unknown depth because in this case let's assume that we have an n value of 0 0.013 which would be considered a, tif a typical roughness coefficient for concrete uh, here again we have T which is 2 and uh, a channel slope of 0 0.0045 and a flow rate that's being conveyed through this channel of 175 cubic meters per second. So we want to find the flow rate. Um, Manning's equation, which we could write as Q equals A over N hydraulic radius to the two-thirds power, slope to the one-half power, Sometimes it's more convenient to write that in terms of Q is A to the 5 thirds, slope to the 1 half, to 
divided by wetted perimeter to the two-thirds times n. And the reason for that is that in trapezoidal geometry, um, y, the unknown, is going to be both in terms of the uh, area and the wedded perimeter. That, that variable will appear in both of them. So we can rearrange this equation to put all of the known constants together so that we have the area to the 5 thirds power, the wedded perimeter to the 2 thirds power, q, and, and slope of the channel bed to the one-half power. Again, since t is equal to 2, w of 1 plus t squared to the 0 0.5 power gives us the square root of 5 for w. That is 2.2361. We're going to use that a little bit later um, when we are calculating the wetted perimeter. So, uh, using this equation, what we have is the area going to table 10.1, b plus ty times y to the 5 thirds power. The wetted perimeter is b plus 2yw to the 2 thirds power. And that is equal to qn over the slope to the 1 half power. So if we make some substitutions there, uh, we know that b, of course, in the bottom width is 15 meters. t is 2w, 2 2.2361. And the flow rate, material roughness, and channel slope that's given. So we can write this as plus 2y times y to the 5 thirds power 15 plus 2 times 2.2361 times y to the 2 thirds power is equal to the flow rate 175 times the end value divided by the slope to the one-half power. This right-hand side term is 33.914. On the left-hand side, you have a couple of options. Um, one, you can put this entire equation into a uh, equation-solving calculator, and I'll do a demonstration in class um, on Friday. There's a, an emulator that you can download for the iPhone. If you don't have an HP 48 calculator, you can download a free emulator for it and have the capacity to type in equations graphically. Um, alternately, you could use Excel and you could write the equation on the left hand side in terms of a cell y that you vary until the y value gives you a figure equal to 33.914. Um, I put it into my HP calculator and got that the depth is 1.573 meters and sometimes you'll see when you're solving for the Manning's equation sometimes they'll say y sub n and what that means is it's the normal depth And the normal depth means that flow conditions are uniform, that the velocity is not changing with respect to position, and so that Manning's equation can give you depths. So that's how you find the depth for a trapezoidal channel using uh, the geometry parameters that are specified in Table 10.1. And um, so the tricky part here might just be solving for y, but you have a couple of options available to you, trial and error being, I guess, a last-ditch option there.